Hi, I'm Jenny. And I'm Dave, and this is Elementaire. Hi, welcome to the Culinary Alphabet, and today is the letter T, and the word we've chosen is to trust. And uh, when you trust something, it usually oftentimes is referred to when using poultry or turkey, duck, game hens. And uh, trussing something, you use either string or skewers, and it helps the item that you're trussing, in this case, let's say a chicken, helps it hold its shape so that for presentation, it's really pretty when you bring it out to the table or for the turkey. Um, another way you can truss it is on skewers. A lot of times on smaller birds, you'll uh, butterfly them in half, spread them out, and then you'll use skewers to hold them flat. And um, when you do it in that case, it helps the bird cook evenly. Also, even when you truss a bird with string for the presentation, it helps it cook more even also because you won't have a leg out here or a leg out here. It's compact and it cooks together more as a roast. So that's our word today, truss. And it's uh, referring to holding something together with string or skewers. Welcome to Savory and Spicy Translations. Liqueurs. Liqueurs are usually sweetened alcoholic beverages made from distilled spirits. They can be made with fruit, cream, herbs, spices, flowers, or nuts. What you do is that you steep them into your spirit until you get the true flavor of whatever ingredient that you're using to make it sweet. On today's show, I'm going to be making a cocktail and I'm going to be using Chambord. And Chambord is a raspberry liqueur. And you take red and black raspberries and like I say, you steep them for a couple weeks and then you strain them and you have a wonderful tasting liqueur. Hi, welcome to Elementaire, where we show you simple ways to cook fresh seasonal food at home. On today's show, Dave's going to show you how to make a Gâteau Royale, and I'm going to show you how to make a great summer cocktail. See you in the kitchen. So today we're making a Gâteau Royale, my favorite chocolate cake. It's like a flourless chocolate cake, and uh, when I was in culinary school, I used to spend a lot of time in San Francisco, and one of my favorite restaurants was Stars, and uh, the pastry chef there went by, uh, her name was Emily Lucchetti, and this was one of her recipes, so I think you'll really like this. And on this show, we teach you how to cook food at home, and so many of you in your homes have children, and so I also have children, and today my son, although it may not look like it, he was wanting to help out. So we, it's always fun to involve the family when you, uh, do cooking things at home and it brings you closer together and it's a good teaching and uh, fun opportunity. So this is Sutter and uh, what we have in the mixing bowl is we have four eggs and Sutter is going to put the sugar in and then he's going to, um, we're going to turn on the mixer and we're going to beat these eggs till they're thick. So Sutter, do you want to put the sugar in? Good job. Now go ahead and show them how to use the mixer. Right. You can turn it up a couple clips. Just two more. There you go. There we go. Yeah, I said it wrong. I was, I was wrong on the mixer. But anyway, we're going to beat this till it's nice and thick. So it'll probably take about a minute or two. And uh, we'll just let it beat there, and then uh, we'll come back on, and I'm going to put the sweet. melted chocolate and show you how to incorporate that with the butter. Yeah. All right, so I just got the chocolate off of the double boiler, and I melted it. And you want to let it come down to room temperature. And then what you're going to do, you're going to put some of softened butter into it, 8 ounces, so 2 cubes. And you're going to whisk that until smooth. Yeah, it's nice and soft, as you can see. You can go right through with this fashion. So I'm going to whisk that until it's smooth. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. We're going to whisk that, and then Sutter's going to help us 
he's going to help us. We're going to put that into our egg and sugar mixture, and we're going to do that for about one minute. We're going to mix it up. Did I? Yeah, it's going to be okay. Did you just eat that off my shirt? Yeah. All right, does that look right? Yeah. Looks right to me. All right. So now we're going to add this delicious chocolate and butter mixture into our into our mixer. Small of a mixer and too big of a bowl. That's okay. We'll make it work. I'm doing it all the way up. Alright. Okay, now so go ahead and put that down and put it on low and we'll mix it for two? one minute. Two? Yeah, two one. two is good. Yeah. A one. One more. Two. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Wait, so, so what we're going to do, we're going to mix that for one really minute one. and then we'll be back. Okay. So we're back. We've just uh, finished mixing our chocolate mixture. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some cornstarch to that um, and then fold it in with a uh, spatula. But before we do that, we want to have our pan ready. So I have a springform pan here and I've buttered it. And a springform pan is a pan with a hinge on it that lets you to open it up and uh, unmold it that way. What I've done is a double uh, coating of foil. And you want the foil to go at least three, half to three quarters up the side because we're going to cook this in a, like a hot water bath, a bain marie. So you wrap it with the foil and then we're going to line the bottom of it with parchment. And um, it's hard with all the different shapes pans to get parchment that fits uh, to buy it already made. So I'm going to show you a way to cook or to uh, cut the parchment so that you get a perfect fit every time. So we just take a regular piece of parchment paper. We're going to cut it in half or we're going to fold it in half. And we're going to fold it in half again. And then we're going to fold it diagonally and again and the more you fold it the closer or the more rounder of a circle you'll get if you were to stop here you would have more of an octagon shape but we're going to just keep folding this till we can't fold it anymore Make you want to accept an airplane. It does look like an airplane. Yeah, can you make me? Well, I might make you one later, but if you want to eat chocolate cake, you can use this. Okay, so we'll fold it one more time in half. And then, to get our measurement, we're going to go halfway across the pan, or approximately, so we know where to cut it. And it's about right there. So, got it marked right here. We're going to cut it and cut right through it. Or if you have scissors, you can do it that way. And when you unmold it, got a nice circle. Pretty cool, huh? Do you want to put that on our pan? And we'll pretend it fit perfectly, and it actually does fit almost perfectly. So now we have a lined pan. I will make you one, yes. Okay, so we're going to take our chocolate out right now. And Here, can you hold this? Can I eat it? Okay, if you hold it, you gotta promise not to eat it. I want to eat it. You're gonna eat it. Okay, you can eat that. And so we're basically just gonna put our actually step. We'll take this nifty sifter that Jenny has, and we're gonna do five tablespoons of cornstarch, sift that into our chocolate mixture. like dark chocolate. Alrighty. And then we're just going to fold that in. So remember with folding you're going to go down, up, and turn. You don't want to beat this in. Just, 
we're just going to quickly and lightly fold it in to our batter. So it's like that. And then we're going to put that into our cake pan or our spring form pan. Can you pause this so I can go use the bath? Oh, can I even use it? There we go. And we'll kind of spread that out and smooth that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it into a pan that's filled with water. And we want to make sure it goes about a half inch up the sides. And then we're going to put that into a 350 degree oven for about an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into the oven and Jenny's going to come out and show you a fabulous cocktail. So now with the weather getting a lot nicer, I thought, you know what, it's time to make a nice new martini. So as I was watching the colors of the sunrise, I thought, aha, there it is. I'm going to make you a summer sunrise martini. So we're going to start with two ounces of gin, and we're going to pour it right here into the shaker. And then we're going to do a ounce of the Chambord, the raspberry liqueur I was telling you about. So we're going to pour that in. And then we're going to pour in an ounce of Grand Meunier, which is an orange flavored liqueur. So today you can see I'm using two fruit infused liqueurs. Now we're going to put on the lid and we're going to shake it up. See how frosty it is? Mm. It'll be great on a hot summer day. And then we're just going to pour it into our cocktail glass. Look at that. What a pretty color. It almost looks like fall. It's so pretty. Put a little lime on the side. Happy summer. So we've got the cake out of the oven, we unmolded it, and you want to cook it till the crumb, there's just a slight crust on top, and then when you stick a um, fork in it, it comes out clean with no, uh, with no chocolate on it. And that's when you know you've cooked it right. And this is just a delicious, moist, dense, chocolatey cake. And uh, this is what it should look like. Let it cool a little bit, and then run your knife around the edge of the spring form pan before you unmold it and then you can unmold it. We dusted ours with a little bit of powdered sugar, but it goes great with creme anglaise or even a chocolate sauce. And here you have your summer sunrise. But I want to tell you, when I pick this up, this is still warm on the bottom, and I can't wait to have a bite of this. I'm breaking my diet tonight, guys. This looks too darn good to not want to sample it. Thanks, Dave. This is going to be a great dessert. This would be a very easy dessert to make, too. My gosh. Five ingredients. Yeah, and I'm thinking if unexpected company comes and, you know, because everything you had, you have in your cupboard. Easy enough to make with a six-year-old. Very good. <laughs> Even a six-year-old can make it. We'll see you next time on Elementary. Bye.